Alright, welcome to the CFO channel. My name is Ali and I simplify accounting and finance concepts for founders and investors. In this video, I'll explain the concept of leverage and how investors use leverage to juice their returns. So let's start with the basics. What is leverage? Leverage means using debt to buy an asset. The most common example of this is something we all do in our lives, and that is using leverage or debt from the bank to buy a home. Now, when it comes to investing, leverage is really used to do two things. Number one, just like you're buying a house, leverage allows you to buy an asset that you can't completely afford. So let's say that you'd like to buy an asset worth a million dollars and you don't have the money to buy that asset. Well, you can use bank debt or leverage to buy that particular asset. And number two is using leverage to juice your return on investment. Now, if this concept seems a little bit confusing, don't worry. That is exactly what we're going to cover in this video. In order to understand both uses of leverage, let's take a look at two separate examples. All right, so let's look at how leverage can be used to buy a home. All right, so in this example, we'll cover how leverage is used to purchase a home in year one, and then we'll look at what happens when you sell the home in five years. So in year one, you buy the home worth $500,000. You do this by putting down an equity down payment of $100,000 and taking a mortgage of 400000 In year five, you decide to sell the home. Let's say the market value is a million dollars. You repay the mortgage balance, which now has $350,000 left, and you have a gain of six fifty k. So your total return on this home is the gain of 650000 divided by your initial equity investment of 100000 which turns out to be a total return of 650%. Now let's say you're a wealthy individual and you've got a million dollars and you'd like to purchase a home. The cost of a home is $500,000. You say to yourself, hmm, why don't I buy two homes? Since they're only worth $500,000, you take your million dollars, you divide it in half, buy one home for $500,000 and buy a second home for $500,000. Since you're buying both homes using your own capital, you're not using any debt or any type of leverage, which is why I'm calling this the no leverage scenario. Now for scenario number two, which I will call the 10 house scenario, let's say you take your million dollars and instead of splitting it in half by spending $500,000 to buy one home and the next $500,000 to buy the second home, let's say you take your million dollars and you split it into 10 into $100,000 chunks. You go to the bank and you say, hey guys, I'd like to buy 10 houses. I'll put down $100,000 as an equity down payment and you give me a mortgage of $400,000 such that I can get up to $500,000 to buy 10 houses that are worth $500,000. Now, which scenario do you think will give you a better return on capital? The no leverage scenario or the 10 house scenario? Let's take a look. All right, so for our first example, let's look at the no leverage scenario. In this scenario, you take your million dollars and buy two homes. All right, so in year one, you buy the first house for a purchase price of $500,000. You do this by putting down an equity down payment of $500,000 and bank debt of zero. The second house, same thing, purchase price $500,000, equity down payment of $500,000 and bank debt of zero. In year five, you decide to sell the home. So house one is worth a million dollars. You will take that million dollars and deduct the cost of $500,000 and therefore you have a gain of 500,000. House number two, same thing. Market value of a million, cost of $500,000. Therefore you have a gain of 500,000. If we put it all together, house number one and two in year five, Total market value of both homes is a million times two, which is $2 million. Your cost was your total investment to buy both homes of a million dollars, and your gain is therefore a million. The return on this investment is the $2 million market value divided by your investment of a million dollars, so 100% return. All right, so now we'll take a look at the 10 house scenario. So in year one, you'll purchase 10 houses. The purchase price for each house is $500,000. You multiply that by 10, you'll get $5 million. 
You would fund this by putting an equity down payment for on each home of $100,000 times 10 homes, so a total of a million. And then the bank debt per home would be $400,000 times 10 homes, which is a total of $4 million. In year five, you decide to sell the homes. Let's say the 10 houses are worth a million dollars each, so that's $10 million in total. You will remove the mortgage on each house. That mortgage is $350,000 times 10, so that's $3.5 million. So taking the $10 million minus the $3.5 million, you're left with a gain of $6.5 million. Calculating your return, you do the $6.5 million over the investment that you put out for, to buy the 10 homes of a million. You'll get a return of 650%. Now, one of the key assumptions we've made in the example we just discussed is that home prices will go up. When prices don't go in the direction that you hope for, leverage can be a disaster. Let's look at that 10 house scenario again and see what happens if the value of the house goes down. All right, now let's look at what happens when house prices drop. So you have your original 10 homes. Each of them cost you $500,000 times 10. That's $5 million original cost. The market value per home is $250,000 times 10 homes. That's $2.5 million. You remove the mortgage. The mortgage on each home is $350,000 times 10 homes. That's $3.5 million. You take the $2.5 million minus the $3.5 million, and you have a loss of a million. What's the return on this investment now? Now it's a loss of a million divided by your original investment of a million, and that is a total return of negative 200%. This is how leverage can be really dangerous. When prices don't go in the direction that you hope for, you could lose your entire investment capital. And then in this particular case, because the money you owe to the bank is greater than the asset value of the homes, you actually need to plug that gap by using your own money. And most people simply can't. Now, leverage is used in many asset classes to juice returns. A lot of investors use leverage to juice returns on asset classes like stocks, bonds, real estate, private equity, and now crypto. Why do investors do this? Well, it's quite simple, really. Investors use leverage to do two things. Number one, it's to buy more of an asset that they'd like to own. Just like in the example we went over in this video, you could use your million dollars and buy two homes. Or you could use the same million dollars and buy 10 homes using leverage. And number two, it's to really increase the percentage return earned on your capital. Just like we covered in this video, under the scenario where you were using no leverage, your return was 100%. However, when you use leverage, your return was 650%. So if you're an investor that's looking for a high percentage return, you're going to be using leverage. All right, so I hope this video helped you understand what leverage is and how you can use it to juice your investment returns. If you're a beginner to financial statements, check out my previous here where I cover the basics of understanding financial statements.